back, episode 27. So we got a couple of updates coming to you today. Uh, something that I wanted to talk about with Benton was some ideas I have about my garden, just sort of talk through it so that I can see like what he's thinking. And then if you guys have any thoughts, either text us or leave them down in the comments. Uh, Cause I'm sort of getting into a point where I got to start preparing <clears throat> for next year's spring mm -hmm. before it gets too cold. I mean, you can obviously do stuff when it's cold in the winter, yeah. but sort of getting an idea of what I need to be doing throughout the winter so that I'm not just sitting around like, Oh, I need to do this and this and not getting it done. But, um, so if you don't already know what I want to do in my backyard is turn, uh, two 25 foot by 14 foot wide um, areas into each of those would be four 25 foot long by 30 inch uh, beds to plant into. Four of those will be, or those will be caterpillar tunnels, the 25 by 14. Yeah. In the front yard though, I can fit five 25 foot long by 30 inch wide beds with no tunnel over it. Yeah. So that really can only be used for like summer and fall and spring not necessarily winter depending there are some things around here we can grow mm. in just the dirt wide open all winter long because we don't have harsh winters but what are some like vegetables that you think like most people dog you gotta be growing tomatoes so, okay. I know I you're have, already doing it. I know you're yeah, already yeah. growing that, but you got to do tomatoes. I want you to name them all. Yeah. You sure. got to do the peppers. Like I'm thinking we do some, we got, you got to be making some salsas okay. this, uh, this year. Um, like some hot ones, some habanero, like peach habanero or something habanero, like that. Okay. Yeah. That'd be really good. Or just, you know, just good pepper is mm -hmm. what I would say. Um, can you grow, or are you going to be able to grow... And ground so like like carrots and or and garlic and yep, onions. Yep. yep. All okay. those are on like my idea list. Okay. Cucumber. Can you do that? Because I love mm -hmm. a cucumber. Uh, pickling cucumbers and longer cucumbers nice. and even sort of in between the two. Okay. And what about? Hmm. So here I'll show you some of the ones I have, and obviously you guys can't see it, but any fruit. So like berries? that's what I'm thinking, like blueberries, raspberries. Uh, what I'm trying to figure out is, so like I wouldn't do those in like raspberries or blueberries in the row beds because those crops come back every year. They don't die and get replanted. Oh, so okay. in the beds, most of, uh, actually all of it will be stuff that, you know, you harvest. Harvest and replant. Cycle. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, so for tomatoes, I have beefsteak pole tomato. So all pole tomato means is that it grows up yeah. and you can grow it for some people can grow them. I think the longest one was like, it was, it was long, man. Yeah. It was big. Um, but beefsteak tomatoes, that's like your slicing tomato. Um, a brandy wine, red and yellow. So on the same thing, they are red and yellow tomatoes. Yeah. What about cherry? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I got that. I don't know if it's on here specifically on my cart, but uh, I had red and yellow cherry tomatoes, nice. uh, red and yellow pear okay. tomatoes. So they're a little bit bigger than cherry, but just a pear shape. Um, they're pretty good. All right. Um, I, they have like dark red sweet cherry tomatoes. Um, then I had like a yellow onion, a red onion. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, and then I was going to show you these carrots. It's called Carnival Blend Carrots. It's like yellow, purple, orange, darker purple um, carrots. They look pretty sweet. Which ones were? Oh, yeah, I've seen those before. I I've seen that type. Um, red or bell peppers, basically just sweet peppers. Yeah, ones bell that peppers are red would be good. Or green that turn red, so you can harvest green and red. Um. I have broccoli on here because... Asparagus? I'd have to look into asparagus. I'm not sure. Yeah, I've never grown asparagus kale? or thought about it. I had kale on here. Um, okay. Radishes. Yeah. Um, look at this corn. So a sweet corn, but it's 
literally like colorful. It was like confetti. Yeah. Especially the one. Yeah. It's got like pink, blue, green, white. What the hell? Like, yeah, it's insane. Um, And a lot of the stuff I just think like looks really cool. Yeah. Uh, other bell peppers, the Jimmy Nardello sweet pepper. That's a sort of popular one. Um, little carrots. Cabbage. Uh, cabbage I thought about. It would really just depend on, and that's the other thing, like oh where I sort of go with this. Yeah. So my idea as of right now, which could change, is just to grow for f- like families, um, subscription type boxes. But if I was to do something where like, let's say I just talked to Brian at Union and I was like, all right, you know, tell me what your weekly order is for, you know, produce, figure it out, figure out out of all the months, how many months I can grow the produce that he needs Mm -hmm. and basically just dedicate. I don't know if this would be necessary for a restaurant that size, but dedicate my entire yard to just supplying one restaurant's food. Yeah. You know, uh, I feel like I'm like, like I said, leaning right now more toward this, for families and friends and subscription box style yeah but what are your thoughts on like that i mean i think the subscription box i like the most but the union thing sounds pretty cool yeah because you you could could, if you could pull that off i mean if you think you could have that much produce and that's what i'm not sure because i don't know how much that's a lot of produce right there for a whole ass restaurant Yeah, I mean, so I did the calculations, and I can't remember the exact, like, square footage, but I'm looking at, if you have 13 25-foot-long beds by 30 inches, Mm -hmm. you could, I mean, that's, I did the calculations, it's going to cost me about $1,000 just for compost, Yeah, just to do my beds, um, and that's at $66 a cubic yard. Okay. So, I mean, I feel like there's enough room. Yeah. Because if you do, if you do 25 foot, like, let's put it like this. The amount of tomatoes I had this year is nowhere close to 25 foot. Yeah. And I have too many tomatoes. Yeah, but you do have a lot. That little bed that my lettuce is in is, I think maybe three by six Mm -hmm. so imagine that's only six feet that's going to go for 25 feet because 30 inches is basically three feet and this doesn't count for your satellite gardens like the one in like your garage or something yeah and that's the other thing too i was going to say along with all the stuff that we just mentioned fruit and vegetable wise uh doing microgreens Mm -hmm. and yeah that could be big and like different uh sprouts and things like that and like even for like a health food store or a juice bar doing like wheatgrass mm-hmm. um because i will have room in there to do that and then if it ever got to this point which i don't know you know how long this would take but even growing cannabis mm. as like a a boutique type like small batch i'm just waiting for the farmer's market to uh, for there to be a booth in the farmer's market yeah there isn't one yet it's not a stand and i I just like i don't know if it's because no one is doing it or no one feels like they can do it Mm -hmm. or if it's people or like it's not like legal let yet because you can't like sell it's the gift type of thing Mm -hmm. but obviously we know there's like loopholes around that type of stuff but i mean could you imagine what if somebody literally just set up a booth out of their own pocket and just was giving it away f- literally for nothing? Yeah, that, 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 it technically is gifting, so it is what it is. I mean, that would be interesting. I the only I think you would run into a problem where like, you know, you if you bring a pound of weed to the farmers market, you're carrying a pound. Like That's you're okay. not allowed to. It's to be it is like That's a fine. N- nine. Uh, what was it? Was it right under a pound? Like one, I get what you're saying. One eighth under a pound, <laughs> but legally you can only carry an ounce. So mm-hmm. then you'd be giving away like what an eighth to each. Like you know what I'm saying? Like you can't bring enough weed legally 
Yeah, I don't know. To give it away in quantity. But anyway, uh, off topic a little, but yeah, like doing stuff like that where if I just grew uh, for like a season a certain strain yeah. and switched it up to strain and had like different ones and different batch names and things like that, that's something that I'm interested in, in as well. Um, but yeah, I think I was telling Benton the name if i can go with it it's gonna be like chickadee farms because the street i live on is chickadee so and then doing i even thought about doing with the produce that i grow like maybe dabbling into like meal prep type stuff where you know you prep a salad or um even if it was something simple where like i cooked rice with you know different vegetables and things like that i mean i the sky's the limit but just Look, looking up how much an ounce of weed is like visually it's four fingers in a uh, in plastic this, bag yeah, basically in plastic bag those plastic bags come in so many different sizes just a sandwich bag no, so they have that that's one geez one ounce is that many yeah Good gosh. It's a lot. It's, it's 20. It's grams. more than enough for a guy like you. That'd be a lifetime. <laughs> Let's see. Illinois dispensary sell one ounce for 380 bucks. Yeah. Wow. One gram is $30? Mm-hmm. Why do I feel that's kind of steep? And it sort of is. I feel that's kind of steep. I feel that's like private school prices right there private school <laughs> prices yeah i mean that's like private school prices right there <laughs> yeah no i mean 300 for an ounce is pretty steep yeah like, you can you can get some pretty good stuff for absolutely under 200 interesting um As, illinois man stay away from there <laughs> yeah stay away from there they, they they're jipping you there <laughs> but yeah i just think that so then you have the garden beds and then i was talking about doing maybe some fruit trees in the the yeah. little stretch that's the cities or whatever uh city trees <laughs> that'd be the city property then <laughs> yeah but you can grow into it yeah, yeah, yeah. um so the city comes and takes it because it's their fine. property <laughs> we'll plant some more <laughs> uh but yeah i think on that apples <gasps> honeycrisp apple can what? you grow a pumpkin next next year so just just plant one, one one plant. That's just one. Why you want a pumpkin? Yeah, dude. Just one and like really like fertilize it, like get it as big as you can. Well, the way to do that actually, if I did that, I might just do it in like the back backyard yeah, yeah, and just yeah. grow one because what you do with that is you grow the like basically yeah, the yeah. vine out really really long and yeah. you take all the flowers off. And you only pollinate one flower. Uh-huh. And all the energy, because the plant knows that it only has one chance to reproduce. And that's like, that's its, it's job. It's all out. <laughs> and it literally, that's how they get those massive pumpkins. Dude, you should do that next year. You could grow a big-ass pumpkin. It'll be fun for, the, for everyone in the neighborhood to come by and see your pumpkin. Could you imagine? It, and you think I could get it too big to get from the backyard to the front yard? Uh, Probably. I mean... Because that they, gate... It's five foot nine, so that's that's pretty big. Five but foot dude, nine it's width. not about it's not about for me. I'm not even thinking about how big it is, about how heavy that thing is. I feel like you could just get some Dog. guys to roll it. No, but that's the thing. It's not, the thing is like it stops being able to roll because of, of the weight. It usually gets flat. Like it gets. Oh, uh, it just like smashes. Yeah, it gets like sunken. It gets flat on the bottom and then round there, so you can't really round it. But the biggest. World's biggest pumpkin was in Italy uh, and was 2,702 pounds and thir- pretty much 14 ounces. Um, it's I, I one ton. I would, I would just want to grow one pretty a, big, a not one, necessarily huge. A one ton pumpkin. I mean, I remember back in the day when Logan Paul bought the world's biggest pumpkin for like 5,000 dollars or something and then cut it open like cored it out and like lived inside it for like 24 hours that's so funny i, I remember that challenge uh that was that was great but dude you should do it obviously it doesn't need to be this big mm-hmm. 
But if you can get it to be like, I wonder if you could rotate it and stuff like that, like every day to keep it from flattening yeah. on one side. If you could consistently just do that with it, maybe get it to around like a four hundred pound bumpkin or something like that. Oh like my that gosh. could be, and then yeah, and then you get it put in wheelbarrow. Get some guys like somehow like take it out in the front yard and like you can maybe get the news for that. Yeah. Big, biggest pumpkin in Virginia Beach. Good advertisement. Yeah. And then by Chickadee Farms. Yeah. Let's go. But. Next year, do it. I'll think about it. My cousin sent me uh, some Snapchats the other day. She was asking me if I wanted some pumpkin seeds. And I, I think I told her, yeah. Um, And then everything that I'm doing it would be considered organic. um, For sure. So that's another plus. Uh, yeah, that would be a big plus. Yeah, yeah, they live inside it. <laughs> that pumpkin's not even that big. I know this was back in I don't know when the hell this was, but it was a while ago. Um, but yeah, he bought like the world's biggest pumpkin, a pumpkin like North America at the time or something like that. And they do they used the crap out of this pumpkin. They did that, and then they cored it and slept in it. And after he slept in, it, they made the world's biggest like pumpkin spice latte. So they poured a bunch of milk and like all this like uh-huh. stuff into it, and like had like a sip of it, and like they all yacked. And, like, uh, it was terrible. That's funny. But, yeah, they milked that whole pumpkin for a while on, yeah. their, on his YouTube channel. I remember that. I was like, bro, when you get make a video that's not about this pumpkin. And then that would be the other thing too, actually. Sort of what you just said is, I want to. I would want to start like yeah. doing social media TikTok. and. Uh, Benson thinks I should do TikTok. TikTok. I don't know anything about TikTok, but I got you. I'll be your I'll be your digital manager. You know, yeah, you'll be my yeah. digital advertiser. Yeah. Or, uh, marketing. Marketing. There yeah. you go. I think that's your it. social media marketing manager. Yeah. Yeah. I'll step down from my job here. I think you can do both. <sighs> nah. <laughs> nah. nah. I mean, you can step down from your job nah. if you want. Put all my focus into this. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. Um. But yeah, and then going into like, just sort of showing, I guess, the behind the scenes of the process, because there's, I mean, there's nothing to hide, you know, yeah. and it's sort of just, I think people like that, um, that aspect when they can see sort of how everything is being done. And then even, um, what I was thinking too, an idea was that before, like I would talk to somebody if they wanted a subscription box, mm-hmm. sort of almost do an interview on them. Yeah. Um. And then I feel like something that I'd like to do is almost make it mandatory for if you have a subscription box, you have to come to the farm before you start and see, see everything. how it's going, like get like a tour um, just because it would sort of, in my opinion, like weed out some of the issues you could have. Yeah. Um, True. And they can see, you know, what's going on. And I think people would like that. Yeah. I think people would really like that, actually. Um. I guess now it's just getting everything started. Today, what I was doing was... Did you get a license for that? That's what I don't know and that I need to look into. Is you, like, you might as well just get your own LLC license just for the hell of it. Well, that's what I'm going to do for sure. I'm going to get a, a business... You're saying like a business license? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd get a, a business um, for sure and it'd be Chickadee Farms, if possible, LLC. And then uh, from there, looking into what it takes to get you know nutrition labels and things like that oh, I forgot it. Yeah, you to like that stuff. do all that stuff yeah um and obviously i know this is all a process but i don't think by next year i'll be to the point where i can like sell i hate it's not like this isn't the way to put it but like 100 percent legally or whatever yeah. but because you can just sell the stuff that you grow it's not like yeah but if you get to a certain amount mm-hmm. production and and trying to get in like a small section in a grocery yeah. store or something or you know like yeah, when, getting you start, your... when you start getting to that level yeah i think you have to have some type of license to, mm-hmm. like further type of stuff and i saw papers huh papers papers <laughs> papers please um I saw this dude who does like urban farming. I can't remember where it is. It's somewhere, I think a little bit north of here. Uh, but even let's say <clears throat> Thomas's parents, for example, wanted a subscription box, veg box each week. And they have a little bit of room in their yard 
that they're not using. It's just grass. Mm -hmm. And they would either want someone to set up basically the garden for them and they can just come out and pick it themselves. Same sort of thing where like someone takes care of it for them or you just implement the system and show them how to do it and they can just do it. Yeah. Uh, and just charging a fee for setting it up. Um, and then, or sort of leasing the land from them in a way with saying like you get all the free vegetables that you want you know from your garden yeah. or just in general in case your garden or this sort of harvest doesn't come through we can pull from other ones and leasing land from people like that where you're not necessarily paying them to use the land with money you're using um the vegetables themselves this way you can expand your uh, production a little mm -hmm. it just becomes tedious in the fact that you know if you need to do something at your house thomas's house um my house yeah once it gets too big yeah, gonna be then big. it would get to a point where like you might have to hire one person yeah. like part-time to okay today you're gonna go check on this and then it gets to a point which you know obviously you just have to figure these things out as they come at that point but like you know, Thomas's parents don't want random people coming over to mess in their backyard. At rain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You just have to figure that sort of stuff out. But it's all, I feel like, doable. Yeah. But I don't think, especially not right away, but maybe eventually, I'd get into, like, process things. Like, for example, like you said, salsa. Or if you had enough berries to do like limited jam like jam takes a lot i feel like yeah that does take a lot actually but, but pick, pickle stuff pickle stuff yeah that's a good one uh pickle stuff like pickle pickled stuff jalapenos could, yeah, would pickle. be that bad that's true but yeah no i think it's a good idea and it's pretty solid and i think yeah we, if you had the media site into it i definitely bang. think that that's something that would be important um and then any other ideas that anybody would tell me, you know, looking into those. Whatever y'all tell us. Exactly. Um, but I'm trying to think, I mean. Can you go bananas here? I think it's kind of tough. I think you need some pretty warm heat That's for a majority of the year. Avocados? Maybe. Yeah. I'm not what? sure. I'd have to look it up. Interesting. An avocado tree would be, if we, if I could, um. Even if it just produced a little bit. It'd be, it'd be interesting to see if that's a thing here. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. I, I think it'd be fun to see kind of where all this goes. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, good update from you. I'm excited to see where I said all, all this is going to turn out and go. Uh, I don't really have too many life updates on me. I'm going to Wintergreen this weekend. Go get some. Uh, what's it called? Engagement pictures. Engagement pictures, man. Y'all do engagement pictures, right? Yeah. Was it down in Norfolk, right? Cool. Yeah, we did botanical gardens. That's right. So, that was fun. Got any tips? Teach me how to smile. I mean, I never, I never had an issue with <laughs> getting my picture taken. Sarah was the one who was like, I was, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It'll be. It's, um, I mean, I'm really happy because it's it's in Wintergreen. I yeah. really, really like that place. Uh -huh. So. Just like Bug Grace, just like Bugger and Maker, like probably take a couple shots beforehand anyway. Yeah, maybe pound of fifth. Pound of fifth. <laughs> Give me Lucy Goosey. Oh my god, and be just, sloppy. And the just can't have my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, but I did get to go up um uh, and uh, meet with Squaw Squad, talk to them, and they actually sent us some questions, so if they're listening. Hopefully they'll enjoy this. So we got some questions from Brianne, Jerry, Joe, and, uh, and Steven. But so anyone when I say Squad Squad, people are like, "What the hell, is Squad Squad?" <laughs> <laughs> Squad Squad is just a nickname that uh, my friends from college we just call each other. There's like I don't know, probably like ten of us. I want to say ten to twelve of us, and we're just one big squad. And then <laughs> we say Squad twice, <laughs> Squad Squad. <laughs> But, um, so we'll start with Joe. Joe said, uh, what new car you think, uh, you, you'll think you'll get in the next like couple of years. Or like, what's like your next car going to be? Um, I'd say 
<laughs> if Joe watches this, he's going to be like shaking his head, I feel like. Oh, I'd say uh, another Prius. Yeah? Yeah. I think I think Joe's going to like that. Yeah? I mean, I'm going to go Tesla. Like something electric. I would like a Tesla, but I just don't think that. I say Tesla, but I mean, I'm hoping that within whatever amount of years, whenever the next car I get, whether it's Tesla or if there's any other brands by that time that have come out that are really good electric cars um, that are kind of similar to Tesla, or even if it is Tesla, I'd probably be buying like, you know, like this year's model, like 2021 and like 2025, like model. Like, mm-hmm. But I just think that electric cars are just going to get better and better. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. The reason I say Prius, Sarah just got her Prius and I don't know. I just. You liking it? Yeah, it's it's bigger. It gets better gas mileage. Yeah. I don't know. I just think... Throw some surf racks on it. It's perfect. Yeah. Everything is going to be going like electric and stuff, so might as well. I think, obviously, the longer I wait for a, another light car, the better that electric car is going to be. Yeah. Which is nice. Like, the, the, at least that's the way like, I think about it is I shouldn't be in a rush to get, like a new car yeah that way because the longer i wait the better it's going to be for like wise for the for these cars like mileage wise and all the different safety stuff and things like that they already got like a more and more bugs the, like, only, the only thing that sucks about you is you have a jeep yeah. so like you wait longer and longer you're gonna still be paying and paying on that gas mm, yeah <laughs> dude let me tell you i filled up with 60 dollars <laughs> 60 dollars for a freaking tank and does a tank last you a week on? You don't go to I mean, it from I, work every Yeah, dog. A, a tank, an average tank for me, yeah. you know, if I'm not, like, traveling on the weekends, two weeks. Two weeks. Because it says I work from home. That's still 30 bucks a week. Yeah, but start going to you work more and green. stuff. Well, it, take out trips yeah, like that. Yeah, Stay yeah. within Hampton Roads, but I'm doing I'm a little bit more active going to the office. Yeah, probably like once a week or like once and a half. So like, I'm still spending like 60 bucks right there. But it just happened to be, it used to be 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Brian. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, tell me why I'm literally about to go surfing the other day and this dude just out of nowhere, I'm like walking down to the beach. He's like under the shower, like doing his thing. And he like he's like, hey man, it's pretty fun at that blah 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 like talking to me. And then he's like, you know whatever. And I was like, yeah, like I came up from Virginia Beach, I went to Hatteras, and now I'm, I was back in Kitty Hawk. And he's like, yeah, I can't afford to go anywhere. Fucking president. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, this <laughs> this guy. Oh, oh, it was so funny. And oh, then I was like, all right, man. <laughs> all right, whatever, you crazy man. <laughs> nah, it was really funny then because. It was just out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that I think that's what I'll be end up doing is I'll probably end up going definitely electric. Mm-hmm. If I can, Tesla would be nice, but maybe who knows in the next three, four, top five years, um, then maybe a, you know another brand or yeah. something like that, or even name brand, you know Ford and you know Chevy yeah. and all this yeah. stuff. They may that's have like their own line. Prius, they have their own plug-in Prius. Yeah, exactly. They may have their own line of like cars. The Chevy Volt, um, maybe ne- Jeep, maybe Nissan knows? Leaf. No, that's what I was saying. Jeep like, Wrangler. <laughs> when I feel like at some point, either a car company is going to die or it's going to go electric. Yes. You know? And that there is... will be Jeeps that are electric. Because yeah. if they're trying to make semi-trucks electric, like, come on. Yeah. Like, there's going to be Jeeps that are electric. It'll all be the same stuff. Yeah. Just um, a different <laughs> frame. Next one we got <laughs> is from Steve L. Oh, yeah. Steven said, what's, what's the grand slam of an upset stomach? Um... And like, and I had already had my answer, but then Steven kind of answered a little bit of it. He, he said leftover gas station sushi. Um, I, I was going to say sushi, but like it does can be any type. It can be good sushi, but something about sushi and like chocolate milk just <laughs> like sound terrible to me. It sounds like the worst concoction. I was going to say like, I took it as like. So, here's some things that I do that Sarah says are, like, just gross and absurd. What? Like, I'll go out, eat, like, a Freezy Pop Popsicle, Mm -hmm. drink a thing of coffee, 
Okay. Have some cereal. Okay. Uh, like too too strange. But, all right. Eat like a salad. Um, this is all like throughout the day, right? This is like almost back. Like we'll eat dinner, so it'll more so be like we'll have a salad okay. and you know something else for dinner. Okay. Then I'll have uh, a bowl of cereal. Right out. Like, this is like 10, 20 minutes after. Salad, a bowl of cereal, some like, coffee, and coffee, icy pop. Coffee, icy pop, like, sunflower seeds, and then, like, just eat a bunch of Skittles or whatever candies, like, right there. Okay, that is a little bit weird. <laughs> like, yeah. and I'll just do, like, a whole... And I can't even think of, like, other random ones, but, like, toast uh, with cookie butter on it or something. Like Cookie butter? What's that? It's at Trader Joe's, if... You guys Sounds really good. Yeah, if you don't know about cookie butter, go to Trader Joe's and get you some. It's or if you don't know about honey butter uh, cinnamon uh, toast like bread, remember we used to make senior year uh-huh. honey butter toast. Uh huh. Squats where we made that a lot. Jacob uh, turned me on to that stuff back like I forgot what year that was, maybe junior year. Um, <laughs> J- we, Jacob made that for me all the time. It was so good. Yeah. It was also crack. Put a little cinnamon sugar on it too. Uh-huh. Woo. I definitely think that you got it though with the sushi and chocolate milk. Sushi and chocolate milk just sounds like ass. Like it just sounds <laughs> like it's gonna be terrible. Like yeah, obviously if it's gas station sushi, like that's gonna be god awful. Yeah. I've also had some really like old chicken. Like I've like meal prepped, you know. Yeah. And I have like twelve things, twelve tubs of like chicken and like vegetables. I think the last one smelled a little fishy, but I was like, ah, I'm sure it's fine. And I ate it and gave me an upset stomach. I feel like, I've um, done that. I've done that a lot, actually, with meal preps. <laughs> I get to the last one, it's, it doesn't smell too good. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure it's fine. I gotta eat it. I'm not gonna waste it. And I ate it, and then I had to call it sick for, sick for the rest of the day. <laughs> oh my gosh. I definitely feel like getting, uh, something off of a dollar menu of, like, five different fast food restaurants would fuck you up. Yeah. Dude, people make fun of me because I get the chicken salad sandwich from 7-Eleven. Yeah. People say that's risky. I'm like, I don't know, dude. It's pretty good. Dude, I get the the mac salad from um. Yeah, you, um, what we had up food in... Food line? Yeah. I love mac salad. Dude, it's so good. I feel like people say that's risky, too. Funny story about mac salad. Growing up, Food Lion, or Farm Fresh Road at the time, back in Suffolk in the day, had probably like six, seven years old. Salad bar, we got up there with Richard, grab the spoon, eat it, put it back into the salad. <laughs> Hell yeah, look at my eye, I guess Richard sees it, he just goes, did you just eat that and then put the spoon back in? And I was like, uh-huh. Like, like no, obviously I don't like think about it. He goes, all right, let's go, we got to leave. <laughs> <laughs> He said we just left. He didn't tell nobody. He was like, yeah, we're just going to go, brother. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so, stay away from this. Stay away from this stuff. Serve your own salads. For, for real. Um, another one we got from Jerry was, uh, your thoughts on if things will ever go back to being normal. <laughs> what do you mean, Jerry? What is normal? This is normal. <laughs> no, nah, I mean... I've thought about Hell it. Hell fucking no, it's never <laughs> going back to normal. Don't kid yourself. Anyone who tells you that it is is fucking lying to your face. That's I, the truth. I think it would go back to normal. As long as you get vaccinated, <laughs> it's going back to normal. <laughs> I think if things would go back to normal, maybe if, maybe like media just shut up. Oh yeah. For Absolutely. Like a month or something, like just no one talked <laughs> or something. Yeah, that may no, be a thing, if, but... Things going back to normal, obviously, yeah. I don't think things will ever, ever go back to normal. It's always going to be a thing. But I do hope in, like, 30 years, there'll be some type of normal, let's see. Yeah, how, no, I definitely say. think, for sh- I, I guess I was sort of being... Um, dramatic. Yeah, or <laughs> dramatic and hyperbolic. Uh, <laughs> things will definitely be, like, more normal. But at the same time, like... I don't know. This is just something that will leave an imprint for a pretty long time. I feel like. Yeah. I there mean, people stop talking. A about lot it. of a lot of things have changed in ways that like you can't even imagine. Like even just you, people don't want to go back to work. Yeah. 
people don't want to go back to work. Um, and a lot of people don't want to work for other people anymore. There's been, sort of like in my situation, like there's been so many different people that are willing to just start their own small business and just make a little bit of money, 30 grand a year at the end of the day, then work for somebody else for yeah. 45 or 50 grand because they're not working as much when they're working yeah. for their son. Like, I feel like a lot of people have they've switched how the they've thought. Five. Yeah. Trust me, I know. Yeah, I've seen yeah. that. Um, and things like that and even just the way people commerce anymore. Yeah. I mean, everything's been moving digital, but like things like that. Now, when you talk about like whether people are going to be wearing masks or if like people can go no, to concerts yeah. and all that. I like, think we're already getting that back will, to that. I think slowly we're kind of getting back to that. Concerts are starting to happen. I they're definitely happening, but I'm if hoping you within don't the next, fit like, the guidelines, you can't yeah. go. I'm hoping within the next like two, three years, it'll be kind of like yeah, not that big of a deal anymore. No one's going to be like doing it or anything like that. I think something. that what it'll be too is more like a, a different fracture. Like there's going to be concerts and things that certain people can't go to because they don't fit what has to happen and then there's going to be another set of similar content whether it's music or comedy or this or that that are the opposite like if you don't fit a certain this or that then you can go to yeah there was something in the paper about if you, you travel outside the united states like coming back in you have to be like vaccinated or have like all this guideline stuff set up but yeah i mean it depends on what your definition or of normal yeah. is but i think eventually things will i think things are always getting better yeah so. i feel like things are trending in the right direction right now like i least. think if like you said like if you sort of just even if you can't do it for everybody if you just cut the cable yeah. to the news and just focus on something that you're passionate about and just do it and be involved in like your community. Yeah. Your local area. Like you'll notice that things are a lot more positive than the negative. Yeah. That's a fact. So um, that's some encouragement. If you uh, yeah need a little positivity, get, get involved locally. Yeah. Uh, so then last one is coming from Brianne. So she just wants to hear about stuff like growing up in Virginia beach like any, any like weird stuff, funny stuff. So when we were all, she together, grew up in Virginia. Yeah, Georgia. she went to FC. When we were all together, she said that it was a thing which I had never heard of. You tell me if this is true, but apparently, like there used to be a hand signal for seven five seven. Like people would say they they were in like the seven five seven. Did you know that? I didn't know. I, that's what I said. Brand was like so like dead set that, I believe that this was a thing. They literally seven. That's that's a seven, right? No wait. Is that a seven? Wait. How do you write a seven? Is it this yeah, way? Yeah, yeah. Wait. That's a seven. Is that a seven? Yeah. That is? Oh, wait. <laughs> Which That's is... a seven. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, we're dumb. Seven, five, seven. I feel like that used to be like... or that's, That was the thing when she grew up. That was like a hand signal. Like, what the hell? That's funny. I've never heard of that. No, I hadn't. I said that, that must have been like some like private school or some public school type of thing because that that was yeah. I mean, we did we did go to school out in Norfolk. I'd say like honestly, I don't have like what was its memories and things like that from Virginia Beach like as a kid growing up in Virginia Beach. Yeah, most of mine would be I guess like when did, surf culture. Yeah, surf surf stuff. When did the boardwalk get here? The boardwalk has like always always been here. Like, or did, when did it get like redone with like all that nice pavement? Um, I feel like that happened when we were we were uh, around. Or, maybe, but the boardwalk's been around I know, for like the, since. The, but when they like the thirties. But when they like expanded it, made it bigger, poured all that concrete and uh, stuff. Like it made like I feel like that. Was during our time. It would have been when we were really yeah, young. Yeah, really and young. Never been able to remember, but because like, what year was Hurricane Isabel? They already had the oh, full boardwalk done it. by then. Yeah, Isabel yeah. was like two thousand one, I feel like. I, know, I can look at that. Hurricane Isabel was wild here. Anything happened with you in the Virginia Beach? We lost a little bit of power, but that was only for about four hours. 
that I remember. Actually, it probably was longer because I'm just a Did kid. we lost... That was 03. 03? Yeah. Um, Suffolk, we lost power for a good-ass while. Like a couple of days, I want to say. We, we were out. And there were yeah. so many trees. We were... Uh, so many trees down. It was wild. We were watching Survivor. And I remember the power going out. Really? And my dad, like, ran out, got the generator, hooked the TV up, and the cable box and whatnot, and, like, got it back on, because he was like, I ain't missing it! I ain't <laughs> missing my shows! That's I remember funny. that. Um, yeah, no, I can't think of anything else, really, that... Yeah, but besides that, like, I guess, like I was saying, surf culture, like, whenever we, I was really young, I'd surf at the jetty, so, like, yeah. all the little rat tail head little surfer kids i'd see but i thought it was cool when i remember the neptune statue was being built when that came in i forget what year that got put in but we were like little kids i remember for that one uh, the hilton was being built as well or that was like being like updated and stuff uh-huh uh, yeah i feel like for that question it would be better for like someone really old yeah like todd or like Jeff and well, Cheryl. Todd didn't. Oh, Jeff <laughs> and Cheryl. <laughs> calling calling not, you guys out. I'm not calling you old. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So definitely George would be a really good person. Since he's lived at the beach. You know. Yeah. Like the whole time. That yeah, would be yeah. really cool to hear. Like kind of what he's seen. And all the different stuff. I like looking at the pictures of the Princess Anne. Throughout like all the years. Because it used to be like a little tiny shack. Yeah, I think the library has a lot of stuff like that. Yeah, that that'd be find. cool to see as well. Go to the library. I also need to get a library card. I got one. I need to also sure. get my, my ID changed anyway. Yeah, I did that as well. I, done I that. got the real ID. <laughs> I made the lady at the DMV laugh the one day. She was like, do you have your ID on you? I said, oh, don't you worry, boss. I got my real ID. So you know it's me. <laughs> she was like... Okay. okay. <laughs> fucking creep. <laughs> oh, shit. But yeah, I'll try to think of maybe later podcast brand if I got any funny stories or stuff like that for Virginia Beach. But I feel like I was lame. I went to school out in Norfolk and then just went home and played video games. Yeah, I'm a little country boy for a while and then lived in Norfolk and <laughs> didn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> played video games when I got home, too. So. Now we have a little uh, segment for Jeff and Cheryl. They've uh, updated us on some stuff. So Miss Ludwig educated us about Dean Smith. Uh, Dean Edward Smith was the head coach of UNC Chapel Hill. Um, and I believe that is sort of like what Jeff grew up with. So that's like why it was his... Uh, his choice, but this guy was a coaching legend, uh, basketball hall of fame. He coached for 36 years there. Um, he was born in 31 and died in 2015. So mm-hmm. pretty long life there. Damn. <clears throat> he was 15 short of a hundred or 16 short of a hundred. But, um, Shit. she, uh, gave us some education there and then, Let's see here. They said they were both laughing uh, yeah, when you, we said we were down two viewers. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, well, you got in trouble, man. You chose all the wrong answers. Yeah, I mean, you're trouble. Ba- you're a bad guy. I've always been a bad guy. Um, so we got some questions from them. So where are they? So the one from Cheryl is if you had to guess what people appreciate the most or appreciate you the most what would you say if you had to guess what people appreciate you the most yeah what would you say so like what people appreciate me the most people are like people as like appreciate about me that's what i thought things about me. that's what i was thinking yeah um i don't know I'm I funny either what's candor mean i don't know is that a good word Probably. I feel like that's... A, I don't even know what it means. What does candor mean? <laughs> candor. Quality of being open, honest, and expression frankness. I feel like I could do that. I feel like I could get behind that. I, I can get behind some candor. 
Um, some good candor in there. I feel like they appreciate that. I feel like I can be straightforward. Yeah. Just tell them. Tell it how it is. Mm-hmm. But besides that, I'm not sure. I think people can appreciate my. You tell me what you appreciate about me, Cheryl. <laughs> yeah. Do a podcast. Yeah. Um. Then I was gonna say I would say it's just straightforwardness or like saying it how it is, not beat around the bush, <laughs> and know that I can get an honest opinion from you, and like because like you don't like care in a way. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, you're just gonna tell how it is. Yeah, which is nice. I think uh, an unemotional like answer like response like no yeah, you see that one nail's like super <laughs> yeah, long yeah she's flicking she's flicking us off why is one nail so damn long she's biting your <laughs> sleeves she's like, she can barely bite oh my god she a baby funny. she a baby yeah um, but yeah I would say that for sure I, I think being just straight up is always nice nowadays everyone seems to be bullshitting around the corner a little bit um <laughs> Now we got Jeff's Jeff's question. This is a good one. Yeah, you go first on this one. <laughs> All right. So Jeff's question. Dicey. Uh, what's one thing you really like about your in-laws and future in-laws? Yeah, so, so I don't have in-laws. Uh, and what's one thing you wish they could be better about? And then we'll read his answer after. But I'd say one thing I like about my in-laws is that they're super cool. Um, I I would say... What? <laughs> I would say... I'm starting to I have sweat. no problem, you know, talking to them and, like, yeah. just... You know, I don't have any issues. Um, the one thing that I'd say... What was, what was the way that he put it? It was something that you wish they could be better about. I wish that they could be better about... Um, they and this is like a good thing uh so it's not i guess this is sort of a cop out but <laughs> they give so many gifts oh really yeah and like it's super appreciated but sometimes it's like we don't want this stuff like we don't yeah. need this stuff it's like not necessary gifts or something like that or like yeah to, like, like use or something i mean a lot of it is stuff that you know you could use but in such quantity sometimes like for example uh now i don't this is not from my perspective so like sarah might not feel this way or yeah sarah might not feel this way i should say this is from my 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 bad um but like sarah will get tons of like makeup products and like face cleaning products and like stuff like that and so much to a fact that like can she use it like where do we store it all yeah. you know it gets to a point where we don't have room to like store it and it's so nice but it's not necessary yeah so i'd say that would be mine good all right next question <laughs> <laughs> no <Nope. laughs> listen man Grace and I aren't married yet, and I gotta make sure we're, we're able to get married before I get to say anything. <laughs> what would you even say? They can't be, no, you gotta I mean, be able to think of something. I I definitely appreciate, I mean, Grace's mom, I would say really appreciate her, what, how do I say it? It's like, she's a big holiday um, type of person. Gotcha. All, all, all through the year, definitely like things seem like big time Christmas, and I'm like not. Mm-hmm. And the, yeah, I do find it annoying like sometimes, but that's just because I'm not a bit like holiday person. But it is it comes on sometimes like forces me to like be in that like Christmas like spirit and stuff. And over time, like when it gets around the holiday now, I'm like it's kind of nice to see her get like all hyped up or something about because I'm over here like yeah, yep cool yeah <laughs> so i will say that it's so it and it's the same for, just in life when someone's really passionate about something it makes me really happy uh-huh. like like patrick with trains yeah like seeing someone who's so passionate about something like that gets me really fired up too mm-hmm. the holidays just took a little bit longer for me just because 
Not really, <laughs> not really fun. <laughs> Always stressful. Um, uh, for Brett, I mean, obviously he's done a lot for me. <laughs> he's just a really good listener and someone I can go to with a lot of different things. I really appreciate that, I would say. Um, that's been really helpful. If I could change or get them to do anything better, I would. I don't. I can't think about anything. Well, let me see. If I can't for Brit, but for Roxanne, I would say maybe just a little, little bit, being a little bit more like open minded about things would be nice. I got you. Or sometimes you know it's not about being open minded. Just sometimes listening, and truly just listening. Mm-hmm. You know, without the like response and things like, or trying to like fix or anything. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. I think hearing someone's opinion without any type of rebuttal or reassurance. You know, whether if you agree or even, whether you really agree or whether if you really not agree. I think it's just really good, a really good skill to have of just listening, and then un- and understanding a person, but not giving any type of response back up like your own. Thing. Yeah, uh, I think it'd be really good and. For Brett, I don't know. I don't know. Everyone sees him, sees him as being perfect. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I got you. I got you. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe teach me how to play. I don't know. He can play pickleball more. I don't know. He can play pickleball more with me. Yeah, I, I got you. I have no idea. That's good. That's good. We'll <laughs> let you get by with that answer. That's a hard-ass question, Jeff. You're gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> Benton's scared. He's, su- he's sweating. sweating. <laughs> he's dying. I'm sweating. He doesn't right know now. what to think. We're uh, all gonna send this to Britain, Roxanne. No, we're not. Uh, <laughs> but did they ask anything else? Was that was that it from them? I think so. Oh, we were gonna read their answers real quick. Oh um, yeah, I can do that. Let me just get right here. So, uh, Jeff was saying that one thing. I appreciate that he appreciates is the how they treat our kids what, uh and you know they're wonderful to the kids and really they're, they're really important to them they also let me keep dating cheryl after they met me oh huh. yeah. good joke there good joke there yeah uh and then one thing to be better about is they lived close to them uh and currently in the process of doing uh his mother-in-law used to move things around the house when they were newly married to improve design. Feng shui. <laughs> <laughs> the feng shui was off, so she was fixing the yeah. feng shui. Uh, but he said he had to admit that it looked better, and it's a fun family joke now. So. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, Roxanne comes in here. like she doesn't really, I would say, decorate too much, but she definitely gives a lot of decorations. But for me, she can do whatever she wants because I know she'll do a good job, and I don't really care too much about decoration so yeah she can go she can come over here and go at it <laughs> yeah no i got you no uh, yeah that's pretty good but yeah i think that's for jeff and cheryl's questions yeah there's always fan favorites right there <laughs> fan favorites um I like, we'll go on to a card really quick kind of close things out got a lot of questions this episode which is good which is good i actually really enjoy it um, so this week from the topic cards, just to keep things even more interesting, um, what's a secret to staying young? Don't do drugs. <laughs> nah. nah. Don't do hard drugs. <laughs> Don't do hard drugs. Okay, I can get behind that. <laughs> um, secret to staying young, I would say, honestly, this is, I don't know if this is a secret to staying young, but something that. It was either Kevin Hart or it was like The Rock. He was one of those guys, or so, a famous uh, actor, is what it was. Um, he, he has kids and stuff, and you know he thought he he was getting disconnected from his from his son because you know his son was getting to like video games and was doing all this type of stuff, and his dad didn't understand it and stuff. So like the dad bought bought himself an Xbox in the games, like play with his son like on call of duty and like got better and like got immersed like in his world mm-hmm. and obviously i think that's a way of like connecting obviously well with your 
family and son and like staying within his son and relating to him being a really good father um but i think that also kind of makes it young i mean yeah. you're, you're doing the hip thing i feel like sort of what you're getting at there is like on top of being a good father having kids keeps you young yeah i would say having kids but then also like staying up to date on the latest and newest stuff i think will keep you you know young and different trends and stuff like you don't have to do them but i think just being even knowledgeable of it can sometimes set you apart from other people like literally when you guys are when if you're with someone else at the same age as you and you're talking to a group of younger people and you're having a conversation if they don't know your age, but you know that you're both 50 and you're having a conversation with them, if you're like relating more to them, they're going to guarantee if you ask like, what's my age and what's his age, they're probably going to put you to like, you know, 5'10 below his age. I see what you're saying. Um, I think then something that you're getting at there is almost like, uh, and this isn't exactly, but always learning. Yeah. Like never stop learning. Yeah. Um, Because I, I mean, it. you can learn about things that like kids for example don't care about like you know or whatever and you could be super passionate about it yeah and i think that can keep you young but uh like you're saying if you sort of keep up to date like learning the new thing that's yeah uh coming that'll keep you young i think that would be mine is uh never stop learning no matter you know what it is uh whatever you're passionate about learn about it too yeah until you're done and then when you want to learn about something else just keep doing that and that'll keep you pretty young uh yeah. something good that i heard and i think this applies to this too would be if you find three different things uh that you're passionate about one to make you money one to keep you creative and one to keep you healthy so like activity a, is what i was thinking yeah, it's but a i mean it type of thing, right? doesn't necessarily have to just stop there it can be yeah. nutrition and things like yeah, that but nutrition mentally healthy stuff like that yeah but those three things um and then obviously for me on top of all that would just be having a relationship with god is more important than all yes, that but yeah spiritual thing yeah that besides all that uh those three are something that i think will keep you moving along for a long time yeah and if all else fails, Botox, plastic surgery. I don't think it means like literally <laughs> looking young. I mean, but that's a good point. That's why I took it. Yeah. <laughs> Staying up, Botox, plastic surgery, fitness, and lipo. No, because I mean, you hear stories about like people who retire and they just stop having purpose and they die yeah <laughs> they die. so don't retire and stop having purpose literally never stop working whether you like it or not yeah just in, admit to yourself you're working till the day you die and that's how it's gonna be eight to five for someone else <laughs> no not that unless that's your, your vibe. unless that's what you want to do <laughs> unless that's your vibe dude then you can stick that's with your that. vibe um but yeah um that's that's I think that's a good way to end it here. I know something we want to kind of bring up was just feedback in general on the podcast. We're halfway through a year of podcasting now up to 27 of what, 52. Um, so we just want to know kind of what can we do better? Mm -hmm. What would you like us? What would you like to see? Or what would you like to hear if you're just an audio person? Um, no matter how big or how small it is, we can definitely try to incorporate it anyway because we're 100% open to feedback. Yeah. <laughs> I'll um, do anything. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And, like, I just feel like there's definitely things that I know we can do better in terms of, like, even just to make things better editing-wise and things like that. But ideas from you guys, too, because sometimes, I mean... It's easy for, I know, for me to just every week do the same sort of thing yeah. and never really try to think about or sit down and, like, have a conversation of, like, okay, well, what could we be doing to do better? Yeah. Um, so I think one of the things that we're working on right now is the travel or, like, you know, guest, mm -hmm. I think, is an aspect that we want to add. And, you know, we're looking into different video and audio stuff and lighting yeah, yeah, yeah. about to make it a travel thing like i said getting with jeff and cheryl 
number one fans. And yeah. It's like going to see a go up to Richmond or Fredericksburg area to see Squaw Squad or when Joe and them come down or something like that. Like, and then get your dad on there and mm -hmm. parents and grandparents stuff like that. So, I think that's another big step that we're looking to make too. It's yeah. just we're just gonna figure out how to navigate those waters to make it still really good for y'all. Yeah. So, any suggestions? Let us know. But you got my number, everyone that watches. Yeah. <laughs> but besides uh, that, um, I think that wraps it up for week twenty-seven. Twenty-seven, baby. Just over halfway through a year, so. Gosh, good times. That was my basketball number, fun fact. Oh. Back in middle school. They retired it after you left. Yep. Killed it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We'll catch you later. Peace.